maturity, some stability, right? However, we think that age is a barometer for that maturity until we're sadly mistaken. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Stay tuned. Welcome to another episode of Chelsea's Live Line. I'm so excited to see y'all today. I truly appreciate you for being here on another episode of Chelsea's Live Line. And I see y'all in the chat. Shout out to Miss Tracy for being here early, tuning in, says, greetings all. I hope you are having a good day. Thank you so much. I'm having a great day today. It was some rain earlier today, but that's not going to stop the sunshine. It's not going to... is the wi-fi okay i think i'm back but yes i want to give a shout out to chavis as well for tuning in he says greetings chelsea and everyone watching i truly appreciate you for being here hope y'all can still hear me that i'm coming through clear i do see that there's some delay but we're gonna work with it today nevertheless nobody's gonna stop this episode unless god wants to stop it other than that it's not gonna be stopped anyway today's episode is called is age gap dating realistic is it realistic Y'all have heard that younger women who date older men are all about being a gold digger. And on the flip side, there are older women who date younger men and they're seen as the cougars. What is acceptable? When do we limit what we consider to be realistic and what we consider to be a hot mess or predatorial? All right. And shout out to Big Smooth for tuning in as well. I appreciate you for being here in the chat. All right, let's get into this. The topic, again, age gap dating. At some point in time, I'm assuming everybody has dated somebody, whether they're younger or older, but we have to create a range today. One of the first things I came across was this picture here that says it's a rule, which is half your age plus seven is that rule, all right? So for example, let's say I'm 25 years old and the acceptable range for me is basically 20 years old to about... I think that says 40. Okay. So that's supposed to be the range that's appropriate for me at the t age of 25. However, I'm not dating anybody that's younger than me. I've done that. And I've actually dated people who are older than me in age. And I'll just keep it there in age. Like I tell you before, age is not a barometer for maturity whatsoever. I would love to know in the chat, has anyone ever dated someone who was much older than them? Let's say that you dated someone over five years or more. Let me know in the chat if you dated someone older than you, or if you dated someone younger than you, what's the youngest? Tell me your range and what you think is acceptable because I have some stats today to let y'all know what I think, well, what the stats think is acceptable. But shout out to my cuz King Hanny for tuned, being tuned in and shout out to my aunt Michelle for being tuned in as well. So I do have a question for y'all coming up very soon here, but I wanna get started for, with the word first and we'll get into some of your comments. The word of the day is coming from Amos 3.3 NIV, which says the following, do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? All right, we walk in, but we walk in the opposite direction. That's why I think that age gap dating can be realistic as long as the beliefs are there, okay? If one person is settled and one person is for the streets, I don't think that's going to work. However, if you have a plan of action and you stick to that plan, that's when you'll achieve the goals that you want to achieve. All right. The reason I came up with this episode, I want to give a shout out to my friend Candace, her mom, Nicole. She had t uh, posted this clip that I saw where an older woman was telling everyone the reason why she thinks that older men date younger women. And I'd love to know your all thoughts on this clip. But before I do that, I want to show you a clip from the Kendra G show where this older guy says he wants to date someone who's younger. And is there something wrong with that? Stay tuned. Listen, Teddy, I like you a lot. I Thank you. like you because of your age category. I'm always, I have so many women that are um, 50 and over that are always asking for men in their age. So this is really awesome. So this is Teddy and Charlotte, 58, recruiter for the airline, is a cancer, who's a 35 to 60, his age group. Um, he has two daughters. Wait, you think 35, so you'll date a woman your daughter's age? I certainly will. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with you. Let's go. At least that, let's go. But you're also open to dating women your age. I am. Okay. I simply adore you. I. That's Teddy. He's 58. He'll date a woman who is as young as 35. Is there something wrong with that? And I'd love to see in the chat what you think. <laughs> yes, I'd love to see what y'all have to think in the chat. Is that acceptable? What Teddy wants? 
Or is it just, hey, too young for you? If you already have a daughter that age, do you think it's acceptable for you to be dating somebody that age? Because my dad is in his late 40s. So if I see him dating somebody around my age, 25, then I'm going to be looking at him with a side eye. Because make it make sense to me. Why do you have to date somebody who's younger than you? That much younger than you, okay? I'm not saying she can't be younger than you, but my age, no. It'll be a clash for me. All right. <laughs> yes, that's that clip there. That's Teddy. Yeah, in my opinion. Hey, let's see what everybody else got to say too. But unacceptable is what it seemed like because stay in your range. Why can't you deal with people who you're used to? Because you're used to people your age, right? Let me get into uh, this clip from the lady. I told you, older lady telling us the reason why older men date these younger women. Stay tuned for this. Older woman explains why older men love younger women. A lot of grown men date young girls to avoid that grown woman pressure. See, every man want to believe that he's an alpha man until it's time to do what alpha men do, like provide, protect, produce. So when that grown woman put pressure on that wannabe alpha man, who's usually a weak man, he runs to a weaker woman. The woman that he can control her mind. The woman that self-esteem is low. The woman he can manipulate, use, and abuse. Yes, that woman. See, ladies, you could be too much for a man. You could be too independent. You could be too accomplished. You could be too established. You could be too confident that you have to send that man back to the basic women that they're comfortable with. And when you finally let that man go, you will realize that he had absolutely nothing to offer from day one, only lies and disappointments, which means that you had everything he wanted. He had nothing. Mm, thoughts on that? I, look, you talk about her deep voice, but I got a whole deep voice. Like, come on now, like. Come on. <laughs> but you said Kendra's show is a whole red flag. I was questioning. I actually asked some relationship coaches, what did they think about the whole Kendra G show, the concept and the fact that men come on to find women? Because I think that men should be the ones who are going out there to pursue the women. Women, you can showcase yourself, but that shows desperation. That shows desperation when a woman goes out there on a dating show, on a dating app puts her whole life story on the internet and then expects a man to come in and take her seriously and not want to just play like the people on the Tinder app. Come on now. I just think it's a red flag for men to go on. Men are supposed to do the initiation, initiating process, in my opinion. Therefore, I don't think that men coming on to a show talking about they're looking for a woman. No, you go out there and search for her yourself. Don't take the easy way out by having women DM you. Nevertheless, nevertheless. <laughs> My Aunt Michelle said, I think older men look for younger women to control them. Yep, they look for the um, older men are going to try to control the younger women. I've dealt with that, past tense. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Jesus Loves You for being tuned into the chat. And shout out to that Christian Fam channel for being tuned in as well. We're just getting into it. Is age gap dating realistic? When? What are the bounds? What are the ranges? She was being forceful with it and mad, not uh, about being chose. We ain't talking about, <laughs> we ain't talking bad about you, Chelsea. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Cause I know I have a deeper voice. I'm not all squeaky with it. I'm straight to the point. I'm direct. Nevertheless, let's get into some stats because now that my stats guy is here, who is Jermaine from that Christian fam channel, I'm gonna get into some stats coming from psychcentral.com. Nearly four in 10 American adults. So 39% have previously dated someone with an age difference of 10 plus years. I myself, I was 25 dating somebody who was 36 in age, all right? And I've dated somebody who's younger than me by a year, but I have, I fall into this stat here as far as dating somebody with an age range of 10 plus years. And put a one in the chat if you fall into this stat right here. Put a one in the chat if you are one of those four in 10 adults who have previously dated someone with an age difference of 10 plus years. Put a one in the chat. Let me see that. <laughs> Or am I the only one here? Hmm. Has anybody had anyone older than them or younger than them by 10 plus years? I'd love to know. Maybe I'm the only one with that stat. Oh, I see a one of the chats. My Aunt Michelle has also fallen into that category where she's one of the four in 10 adults who have previously dated someone with an age difference of 10 plus years. All right. That's one of the first stats I have for y'all. And Chavis as well. I see his chat coming through right here. All right. Thank you for your feedback. Next stat. A majority of American adults, 55%, believe it's more socially acceptable for a man to date someone 10 plus years younger than him than it is for a woman to date someone 10 plus years younger than her. Mm. Do y'all think it's more acceptable? Put a one in the chat if you think it's acceptable for a man to date a woman 10 plus years younger than him more than it is for a woman to date a man who's 10 plus years younger than her. So are you going for team 
man or team woman on this because a woman is considered a cougar when she dates a man that's 10 plus years younger than her. But a man is praised when he dates a woman that's 10 plus years younger than him. So let me know what y'all think. Is it sociably acceptable? Do you agree with this stat here? Yeah. Big Smooth is like one. He agrees that it's more socially acceptable for a man to date someone 10 plus years younger than him. Yep. I agree. And then that Christian fam says, Muslims say men can uh, marry half their age plus seven years. And see, hey, look at this right here. Half your age plus seven years rule. Muslims say men can marry half their age plus seven years. I see the logic, but I think age difference has to be gauged with wisdom. Thank you. I agree. I totally agree on that. Women were told old men give you worms. <laughs> oh my Lord. You're funny. You are hilarious for that. And then Mama Michelle also said it's more socially acceptable for that man to date someone younger than them. And then shout out to Harrison Family Values for tuning in, y'all. And make sure y'all go watch his video he did yesterday about telling the men to stop leading with their resources. Yes, men, stop leading with your resources so you won't attract the gold diggers that I'll be talking about tonight. I'm exposing the gold diggers because a lot of men think just because they're leading with their wallet that they'll find a wife. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. I'll do it for myself. I got it right here. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. All right, let's get into some more stats first. But what I want to ask y'all before I get into any more stats is that what do you think is the average age gap between couples? What do you think is the average age gap between couples? How small of a gap or how large of a gap do you think is the average for today? Can't wait to see y'all answers in the chat. And as I get into these pros and cons, Maybe someone wants to come up on StreamYard tonight and actually chat with me. I have no problem with that as well. Let's see your answers. I see my Aunt Michelle said five-year gap. Big Smooth says seven-year gap. That Christian fam said men are told 1880, blind, crippled, or crazy. I don't agree, but it's often said. Five to ten years for Jesus loves you. And then uh, Harrison Family Values is like, hey, how you doing the air horn, sis? StreamYard doesn't have that feature. Oh, yes, they do. They have that feature now where you actually get the chance to upload background music. So shout out to them. And I just upload an MP3 clip and I'm able to play that for myself. Oh, yeah. So five, five, I see five to ten years is that range most people are saying. Miss Tracy says two to five years. Okay. And then Jermaine's like, I think once you get to a point where the person can't relate to your generation, it starts to get weird. Oh, yeah, there's some awkwardness. But let me tell you all the answer. Miss Tracy was actually in the ballpark with the average age gap being two to three years. Okay. And I think a lot of people in this chat fall into that category, if I'm not mistaken, as far as the people I know who are married in this chat, I think two to three years is what their range is, if I'm guessing. I don't think it's a big gap. So yeah, two to three years. All right. So that's the average age gap. Dre's like, I had two women 12 years younger than me wanting to be my wife. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, I've dated somebody who's 11 years older than me. However, I just, I'll tell you the reasons why. I'll tell you the reasons why in a bit, because I'm going to go into the pros and the cons. Okay. Like tell you the pros and the cons of first, the younger women, what's the pros for us younger women out here that's trying to find an older man to settle down with. One of those cons is emotional stability, right? Us women don't have time to be in our feelings because we think with our feelings. So we want a man who is going to support us and listen to us because we just want to be heard. We don't want you to listen to respond. We want you to listen, to hear us, process what we have to say, and be that person that gives us the attention we need. That's just how I feel. Yeah, we want, to, we want emotional stability. We want somebody who's patient with us. And I think somebody who's older in age is going to be more patient than a younger guy is. And in addition to that emotional stability, I think it's all about the confidence. I want a man who's confident, who doesn't think that just because younger guys may want me, that I'm going to leave him for a younger guy because I chose you. If I chose you, then that means you're the one for me because I'm as loyal as it gets. But that's just something that that man is going to have to find out. But that's why I say emotional stability. Be secure in yourself because if you're secure in yourself, I will love you forever. That's a big thing. And if you're insecure and think that every time a man's looking at me that he, you know, I'm trying to give him attention and try to throw the wandering eye on me because they're looking at me, that's a red flag. And that's why you want somebody with emotional stability. Just saying. And shout out to Gordon. I am 25 years old. Yes, yes, yes. 
And like that Christian fan was saying, your musical preferences, cartoons, and sitcoms are completely different. Yeah. I actually am an old school baby. Let me tell you that. That's the reason why I actually like people who are older because I love old school music. I don't listen to Little Baby. I don't listen to Dub Baby or any, anybody like that. I listen to Barry White, Temptations, Isley Brothers, Ashford and Simpson, and the list goes on. Okay, I listen to old school. I listen to the old school R&B, things of that nature. I'm not listening to the latest hip hop. I'm really lost nowadays. And I feel like an older person just because I have to ask my cousin, Michaela, who's 15, what song is this? Who is this artist? Because I don't know. That's why I don't even watch the award, awards show anymore, like the BET Awards. The BET Awards, MTV Awards, none of that stuff. I don't watch it anymore because all it is is just softcore porn when you see what the women are wearing or what they're not wearing what they should be wearing and then the music they, they're playing and stuff it's not it's not positive whatsoever to say the least all right so that's why i'm looking for a man with emotional stability as that's one of the pros for younger women dating older men we think they, they, they should be emotionally stable we think that we think that i've dealt with a lack of that but that's what younger women are thinking is an advantage of dating an older man the next thing is financial stability all right financial stability. But before I get into that, I just want to highlight some of these comments like that Christian fam channel saying none of the littles, all of them can go little baby. Like, how am I going to say I'm a baby mama of little baby? It doesn't make sense. These, <laughs> these women just, whatever. I agree. I was never into, into that stuff either. And yeah, it's like magic city music. Now it's a mess. Mm. Financial stability. I want a man who's financially stable. And at a certain time, there's a peak of a man's financial stability. And that's in his late 30s, early 40s, I want to say, just to give an estimate there. I didn't bring my stats on that today. But financial stability. Being someone financially stable, such as myself, I would like a man who's also financially stable with what he has going on. He's invested into his 401k at his job. And if he doesn't have a 401k, he has an IRA, an individual retirement account. He has a plan. He has life insurance. He's not standing in line to get Jordans. He's standing in line to get his life insurance policy. Yeah, that's financial stable to me. And also no, having you having a budget, having a budget and not having more outcome than you have income. All right. So you should have more income into your bank account and less outcome. No spending wisely. Not just giving extra tips to the waitresses just to impress them. Like, you got to be right with your money. You can't just be trying to impress people, just giving money away carelessly like it grows on trees. No, it does not. And also, financially stable, or the opposite of that, is when a man has his own brand. What I mean by that is he's building a legacy for his family. Even if he doesn't have a family yet, he's still thinking about that plan. How can I leave a legacy if I die tomorrow? What do I have? Also, I want to see a man who doesn't have brands on him all the time. He's not, he's not looking like all the alphabet, right? I want to see that I can know who he is through what he's wearing. And it doesn't have to be material things. Just saying. Big Smooth says, and not bragging about it shows stability and maturity, right? Not posting pictures on the internet to show everybody the money that you have. And then they're plotting, trying to rob you because you posted all these pictures. It doesn't make sense. At a certain age, you got to stop getting validation from man and get it from the man up there just saying boom boom we want a man with a plan that's what younger women are looking for and i don't think we can find that a lot of times in younger guys unless they've had structure they've seen examples of structure through their family life maybe they've had a married mother and father who've shown them what financial stability is but most guys nowadays they worried about showing all their money on them like all their money is literally on them all their jewelry Everything. So if literally somebody snatched everything they had off of them, they wouldn't be nothing. And I don't want a man like that. I want a man that's branded without a brand on him. All right. Hey, if you're shopping at Walmart, you make it look good. Wrangler cargoes every day, okay? If you're shopping for Walmart, make it look good, right? Because it's not about what's on you. It's about what's in you. It's about what's in you. I want a man or a younger women who are dating older men want a man who can protect them. We don't think that the younger guys can protect them because they too, they more in a Bonnie Clyde situation, Bonnie and Clyde, where it's like, I got to literally wash my back every time we go on somewhere because I don't know who's after you. I got to wear dark shades, tinted shades. We got to have a tinted vehicle because I don't know who's after you. Women want to be protected. I think at a certain age, a man has to settle down and realize his life can be on the line if he keeps making these stupid decisions that he did when he was younger. It's a period of growth for me. And I think that's where an older man is more attractive than a younger guy when it comes to dating. We want protection. 
Another con, another pro, excuse me, for younger women dating older men is that there's no more games or there shouldn't be. We think there should be more games. Haven't you got all your play out of you already? I will hope so. That's what, what younger women are looking for. We're looking for a man that say, hey, I used to play back in the day. Now I'm not about it. And then another con is that older men aren't on social media like that. They're not on social media. They shouldn't be, you know, to a certain extent on social media, lusting and whatnot. And that's really one of the things I've been learning and looking at and recently is that there's a lot of younger guys that seem like Christian guys, but they're really casual Christians because if you go on their social media profiles and then you see who they're following, then you see all the OnlyFans models, Instagram models, the Chloe and the Bailey, I mean the Chloe Baileys and the, uh, you know, Chloe and all them people. All these people that showing off their body more than they're showing off their talent. And that to me is a red flag. So don't just look, women, don't just look for a man that has trust God in his bio, a Bible verse in his bio. It, it stops there, literally. You have to look at who he's following because who you're following is who you're influenced by at the end of the day. I care about your faith, who you're following, and your finance at the end of the day. Sorry to tell you, but that's what I care about. So that's what I care. Your faith is so important. Who you're following, because that makes you, you know, just deter that helps you determine who you are more than anything. So no more games. I want a man who got all this play out the way. All right. Hmm. Video games. And this is what Chavis had to say. My wife is barely older than me. She's 42 and I'll be 41 next month. If I was single... I couldn't date a lady under 30. I feel like I'd be robbing the cradle. Mm. I've always had a desire for older. Mm -hmm, that's good. It's a maturity for me. Now all 20-something ladies are mature. Oh, I know. Don't get it twisted. Some older folks can still act like preteens. I know. Believe me. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> and Jesus Love You is over here co-signing that saying older women are the bomb. All right? Yes. Yeah. Shout out to the older women watching right now. Yes. What's this? <laughs> there we go. Shout out to the older women tuned in right now. Yes. Claim it and love you. Love you at your age. Okay. Like love yourself. Like, ain't no such thing as like settling for nothing at no age. The clock is not ticking. As long as the clock is ticking, you're good. Matter of fact. So that's the pros for the younger women dating the older men. Now I'm going to get into the pros for the older men who date younger women. Why are these older men dating younger women? And maybe you can drop your ideas in the chat as well about what you think. One of the biggest things is maybe midlife crisis. Around the age of 30, the stats were saying, up until the age of 50, men are experiencing midlife crises where their sex drive has decreased. They're experiencing depression. There's a list of things that can happen with midlife, midlife crisis. And as a result, Maybe they need a woman who's younger who can help them through that, who has patience for them to make them feel young again. I think that's one of the pros as well for older men who are dating these younger women is that it makes them feel younger again where they are feeling younger again physically. They starting to work out more. They let themselves go at one point in time and now they're getting back into the gym because they needed somebody who will hold them accountable. And as we know is that sometimes we get comfortable when we get into relationships and we end up picking up a few pounds. I understand that for me, when I got into relationships, I would lose weight, <laughs> but that's just a totally different story. I will lose weight every time I would get in a relationship. So that's just what it is. I mean, pro and con depending on the reason I'm losing the weight. Nevertheless, Men usually feel young again because they're getting back into that gym. They say they got to keep up with the younger guys, especially since they got a younger woman. In addition to that, older men may want more children. Maybe they've never built a family yet, or they're trying to extend that family. And they may want more kids with a new woman. That's when the younger women come in as well. Younger women have the tendency to be more open-minded than the older women may be. Older women like, I ain't got time for you to play with me because I already know. I already know about the game. I already have my romantic experience in my romantic history. You're not about to fool me because I already been through all these games. You're trying to play with me, but the younger women are open-minded because they have less romantic history. Some of us, some of us, as a result, you can get that open-mindedness and you can be heard and you can be filled when it comes to your ego. Men's egos need to be filled at times. Younger women are going to feel that ego more than the older women. They're like, boy, I'm not about to entertain none of your ego you know, what egotistical behaviors at the end of the day, I'm about to do my thing and that's the end of it. But yeah, that's the main purpose of the age gap. I agree, which is that wanting the children, feeling youthful, feeling young again, 
And then less romantic history from the women. This is where the point comes in where I say some of us. There's women, younger women, if you want to call them that, so younger females that be having all these romantic histories. Talking about I got 88 bodies. Got all these ties attached to them. That's not good. You got to know. You got to be able to be discerning about who these women are that you're talking about. Just because they're younger doesn't mean they don't have history. There's some women that get down every single day. I got a different man every day of the week. That's a different story. But most older men are looking for the women with less romantic experience, less romantic history, so that they think they're getting getting a clean slate sometimes. But that's not all the time. I'm just letting y'all know. That's why I put an asterisk mark next to that for a reason. Lastly, for the pros, for the older men dating younger women, they feel less pressured for commitment. I'm telling you, when that clock is ticking, older women are like, hey, you're not about to play with me when you put this ring on my finger. But the younger ones, oh, we just have fun. Let's travel together. I need me a travel buddy. And that's what the older man serves as for that purpose. Younger women say, I'm just going to go with the flow. And if he's a grown boy, he's going to go with the flow too because maybe he's been married before and then he's trying to take his time. And since you got time as a younger woman, he's going to take his time until you put your foot down because a lot of women don't know when men should be exclusive with them. I'm letting you know two to three months, you need to be exclusive with me. After one, one and a half years, you need to be putting a ring on it, especially what we waiting on. There's only so much talking we can be doing, only so much data we can be collecting about each other. That playing field is being leveled as we speak. Oh yeah, because a lot of the women are getting out here beating men in numbers when it comes to how many bodies they got. Hmm. Body, yaddy, 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 yaddy. Avoid the fornicators. Oh yeah, because that's one of the biggest red flags I've dealt with in the past and I've learned from not being matured when it comes to my Christianity, not being matured at that time. I can admit it is that I dealt with some, you dealt with people who said they were Christians, who led me down a path and I led myself down that path not knowing that this was a big sin. Like you cannot play with God. You can't be up in church on Sunday talking about, Hey, thank you, Lord. Oh, you blessed me. Oh, you kept me from this. You kept me from that. But you keeping yourself in that every day. So it's just a battle that you're playing. You going to church, you're fooling people, you're putting on the grins, but it's, it's a game that you play being a fornicator. So I just thank you, Lord, for the blessings and the deliverance. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Shame say all those bullet points you are saying I've seen in a couple dudes lately. Mm. Shout out to Jermaine for saying that. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I body, yaddy, yaddy, I'm sorry. I had to sing it for a second. I don't like it. I don't listen to it. Ooh, if it come on, I turn off from it. I don't listen to that stuff. It's annoying. Just saying. But yes, you have to really avoid that. If a man is willing to wait on you, then he can be the one. But you just got to be discerning and you can't be blind because just because a man say he waiting on you don't mean he ain't waiting on nobody else. I mean, just because a man says he's waiting on you don't mean that he's really waiting on you. Okay? He could be doing some other stuff during his idle time. So just be aware of that as well. And Jermaine's like, one year, forget the half. Oh, yeah. Now I know there are outliers, but if he delays after a year, that's a red flag. Especially if you're a Christian who they say, like, at a certain point in time, you may be burning with desire. So you need to hurry up and get this thing going. Let's get married because what are we waiting on when we've already had all these, we've had all these great conversations that were actually fruitful conversations. What are we waiting on to get married? Because it's only so much talking you can do. And look, you should get married instead of burning with the desire that you may have for that significant other. I agree. I agree. Forget the half. I'm just telling you, some people wait years and years and years. It's that early check-in, late check-out. They get you and they make you a long-term girlfriend. And that's what you don't want. That's not a good return on your investment. If a man or woman is trying to pull you in bed and they aren't your spouse, cut it before they drag you to hell. I agree because it's really easy to get involved, but it's hard to get out at times. But you just got to repent. Don't wait. Like you can be, while you are fornicating, you can be out here trying to get deliverance from God. Like it's not too late is what I'm saying. You don't have to wait till you stop to get deliverance. You don't have to wait till you stop to get help from God. You can get help in the midst so he can deliver you from that. All right. You don't have to wait until you're perfect. Right. That's the reason why there's AA, GA, NA, all these different organizations that can help people when they have addictions, because it's not about the fact that you are trying to stop this moment. You're still in your addiction. You're still in the you know, fornication or whatever you're dealing with, but you get that deliverance, but you got to, con you're continuing in your sin. It's okay to be in your sin and get some help. That's all I'm trying to let y'all know. Mm. Noel Jones syndrome. I had to check that one out because I'm unfamiliar, but thank you for sharing. Yes. Older men are going to feel less pressure for commitment from the younger women. All right, let's get into the cons now. What are the cons for younger women dating older men? And I would love to hear your answers in the chat as well. 
Jermaine says, my wife graduated graduated with a girl who is still with the same dude since high school. She's about to be 40 and they still aren't married. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Lifetime booze. <laughs> Ooh, lifetime booze, old time news. Okay. Just saying. Cons for younger women dating older men. Control factor. And I'm just speaking from experience. Control factor where sometimes you have to play that daughter role. You have to play that daughter, daughter role at times because they're trying to mold and they're trying to groom you. And you're seen as prey to that predator because of that. They're saying the younger woman is unaware of the games that men play. They think. They think. So as a result, these older men are going to try to manipulate you, younger women, sometimes because they see that you are, you know, giving him a chance. So he's going to take advantage of that chance and say, hey, she doesn't have experience, so let me take advantage of her. But that's when you got to have a father figure in your life, whether it's your earthly or your heavenly father, all right, to give you that experience, to tell you that this is not acceptable. These are not games that you should be dealing with. Get out now. And see, we don't want to get out when we don't want to get out. We just don't want to do it. We don't want to get out because we realize that, oh, you know, I'm as long as I'm in a relationship, this is how it's supposed to go. We've normalized the hurt. We've normalized the trauma and the drama only because we didn't have somebody who told us before we got in these relationships what we should be dealing with, who molded us before the man tried to mold us. All right. And that's that control factor. Mm. Noel Jones had a relationship with a lady for over 20 years without marriage before he proposed. By pulling a ring out of a Cracker Jack box. <laughs> Lord. Mm, mm, mm. That's that control factor. That's a big thing there. Also, no shared first is one of the cons for younger women dating older men. As a woman who has dated a man who had a child, I do not want a man who already has a child unless that child is grown. And really, I just don't want a man who has a child already because I want that first. And you can call it what you want, but I want that first experience with my husband because I'm all excited to have my first child to, with you and then you're over here like, oh yeah, I've done this already. That's what I get from that at times. And that's the, one of the cons, in my opinion, as a younger woman, wanting our children to be our first and not having to worry about, oh, is there going to be a comparison between your children and our children because of just whatever insecurities you may have? I don't know. Because maybe since that's your firstborn child, you always treat your firstborn better than the others or whatever logic some men may have. I've dealt with it. That's why I can speak from experience is that that's why I want... You know, if you're a younger woman, this is what you have to deal with sometimes. No share at first. They may already have children. That's just what it is. Yeah. Grown boy mentality. That man is still trying to be young, so he wants to be young with you. He thinks you're trying to have fun, and he's trying to have fun as well. He's trying to dress young just like you, and y'all trying to be like the youngest couple possible because he's still in his grown boy mentality where he thinks that, hey, we can settle down whenever. I don't have no pressure. I'm just going to whine and dine you and treat you like the younger guys. But I'm just older in age, but I'm younger in maturity. All right. That's grown boy. And then also one of the cons for younger women dating older men is that they have more romantic history. So then they want you to fulfill all these sexual fantasies that they've dealt with, maybe because they're porn addictions or other addictions that they may have. So now they want you to fulfill all these partners, all these ties that they've had that they never got rid of. And now you got to come in trying to fulfill fantasies like you're a, you're a star. All right. Just saying that's one of the cons that can exist is that this romantic history that you got, you got all these partners, but I'm not, I'm not pleased with you only because I've had so many people that I'm trying to make you fulfill all the fantasies that they used to fulfill for me. No, it doesn't work like that. No. The cons are he isn't, in, he isn't enthusiastic about the things you are because he's done it already. Mm. Yes, exactly. So there's no shared first there because it's like, you've done everything. And now that I'm trying to do it, you're like downplaying my experiences because I want to try it. And I haven't before. That's a big thing. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. All right. Let me get into the cons for the older men who are dating the younger women. Mm. I'm about to expose some women today, but the first con for older men dating younger women, gold digger, gold diggers. I know y'all have seen them. I know y'all heard of them and I've seen some. That's why I'm about to expose some in just a minute. There's a such thing as Sugar Daddy University. I'm a part of a Facebook group trying to be nosy called Shira 71 Ladies Level Up or Level Up Ladies, right? This group is consisted of women who are trying to learn how to date and marry high value men. I'm going to share some of the posts that are shared in this particular group to see what y'all have to say about it. 
All right. The first one I'm going to talk about is just this woman that's telling you how to get the older value, you know, the high value men, which are the older men. All right. So let's get into this really quick. Let me share my screen and let me read these comments as well. Yes. He wants to star in the bed with arthritis. <laughs> let me share this screen real quick. I'm just telling you, that's the way people think. All right. Let me get into this tab right here. I pray this is the first one. Okay. Here we go. All right. Here we go. So here's the first tab I'm going to go over. Let me know if y'all can, I'm just wait to see if y'all can actually see this. Well, I can see right here. Oh no, y'all can't see it. Okay. Here y'all go. But I'm going to zoom this in just a little bit. Okay. That's much better. Yeah, that is much better. Probably one more time if I can. Yep. That's cool. So old men, old money, get the bag, get the will. Do y'all hear this nonsense? Do y'all hear this nonsense? High value men, older men. One person said, I figured since I have had experience dating and marrying high value men, why not share some of my tips and suggestions on finding a high value older man? And she said her inspiration was Anna Nicole Smith. So just listen to that. All right, skipping some of this, but let's say here, I was in the game before it became a little trend on social media. I'd call myself an old G. It all started at the age of 22. Right eye. All I knew was I had this man spoiling me. Okay, no. I had this man spoiling me and, ma and that made me happy. That's all that mattered. Still does. He whined and dined me, put me in a luxury apartment, and only took me to upscale areas to shop, play, and live. He passed away. And then a couple years later, I met my 49 year old husband or ex husband thereafter, who also took care of me and provided for me. He and I enjoyed trips and traveling every two months. Our favorite destination was Las Vegas. And we enjoyed guilty pleasures of gambling. Thank God he had money to use the slot machines. He put me on his will. He put me on his will. He gave me bags of money and put me on his will. I hit the jackpot. We are still good friends. Till this day, he pays all my bills. He paid my rent monthly too. And so far, I bought me three cars. My ex still pays my bills to this day. How does that happen or how did that happen? I guess luck. Or simply, I simply sought out a generous high earner. I seek them out by going where they are and then boom, got them. I married him after he said, baby, you don't need to work. I make over 200K per year. That's enough to take care of two people. I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. In fact, the men who provided for me spoke such words. I'm going to spoil you. I'm going to give you this, that. I'm going to take care of you. If he ain't saying or doing these things above, block him. She says she's a damsel in distress. And she's going to tell women down here how to meet high value older men. One of the things she says is that you need to do some research online, trying to find men and find the areas that pretty much have high income, such as 100K to 999K. Where to meet them? Like literally, she's telling you to Google the zip codes in your state, country, region with these higher incomes. Try to see if there are celebrities in the area and then go to these places she's letting you know. The upscale restaurant, bars, lounges, cigar lounge, country clubs, yacht club, strip club. Yeah, no, not doing that. Jazz bar, festival, chamber of commerce, charity, fundraising events, sales auctions, art galleries, wine tasting events, derby, tennis, the list goes on. And then she said, make sure you enroll into a class, like a yoga class, et cetera, where you can meet these men, learn a new language. And that's how you're going to get attracted to these men or these men are going to be attracted to you. And she said, you have to stand out and look good, lose weight, get slim, keep hair long and down. This is very feminine. Oh, Lord. okay. Here we go. Oof, child. Okay. Try wearing a curve, hugging, beautiful dress, stay out for a couple hours, things of that nature. Lashes to my lashes are sexy. Here we go with this bull now. Lashes are sexy, seductive, key to the man's soul. You can get lash extensions, glue your own on, or grow your lashes. Make sure the lashes are making your eyes look more open and flirty. And there's a verse, like I read it on one of my previous episodes. So beware of a woman eyelashes because she can try to, you know, try to seduce you with them eyelashes. All right. And this is what she's saying. The eyelashes going to be open and flirty. And she told you, tell you how to make your lips look. You want them to be renewed red or nude pink telling these women how to get high value men 
You need to get your skin on fleek. You need to lose the weight. And then she's talking about the Anna Nicole Smith stuff and how that went down. So that's one of the articles that I came across, right? Let me stop sharing that for a second. This is what you're dealing with. They're literally training women and men. Well, they're training the women like it's Sugar Daddy University pretty much. And that's how gold diggers come into play. This is an example. This is what we're dealing with. And I'm not making this stuff up and I'm letting women know only because... Y'all need to know. I'm letting men know as well because this is the type of women y'all dealing with. When you leave with finances and whatnot like that, they are grooming themselves for you. They're looking you up to see what area codes you're in. So therefore they can find you and finesse you and get on that wheel. That's all they want to do is get on that wheel. Mm. I hope y'all learned something today on that. I see y'all quiet in the chat, but I know y'all still here. So that's a good thing. Make sure y'all hit that like button if y'all haven't already. I truly appreciate that. Yes, this is wild. Thank you. Thank you. He's just trying to process it. Like it is wild. And that's what's going on right now. Next, I want to tell y'all more about how other women are inspired by Anna Nicole Smith. One girl was saying how she's trying to figure out how to love this man because she wants the money so bad, but she don't know how to love him at the same time. All right, here we go with this one. Let's see how big this shows up. One second. Okay, here we go. She's like, ladies, Shira, which is the lady who the ch the whole group is named after. She's teaching women how to get the bag. She says, Shira keeps talking about marrying older men to keep eye on the prize, the bag, etc. Can someone answer me how we are supposed to spend each married day with our old creepy high value man if we can't stand talking to him or his touch? Make it make sense, please. How did Anna Nicole Smith do it? How did Anna Nicole Smith do it? <laughs> LOL. Any suggestions? All right. Look, just read some. We're going to read some of these comments, y'all. She said, I couldn't. Th this was the best comment I've seen right here. The first one. I couldn't. That's me. I want love. And no looks aren't the most important thing. But I don't want to be repulsed by the person I'm with and want chemistry and compatibility. Amen to you. Amen to you. People say, otherwise, it's a job. Right. If you're going to go with somebody just for the money, it's a whole job out here. And said most of these rich dudes are word, uh, excuse me, are weird, pervert, you know, pervert cheaters at the end of the day. Hmm. Hello. Let me read some of these other co comments, you know, and this one here just that's toxic. But just the fact that you can keep this creepy old man for your roster while you're still looking for a husband that won't discuss you. Why use people? And then y'all end up dead on the news. Wow. Here we go. I think that the ultimate goal in this journey, I guess, is being happy and comfortable with your life, right? Creepy guys can be useful for funding your level up in business, but you don't want to spend every night in bed with them and you shouldn't if you don't want to. Just continue continue your path until you find a man that makes you happy by both treating you really right and you enjoy spending time with him. Mm -mm -mm. And then somebody else shared their significant other, but we won't get into this comment here. Uh, they said, just get a roster. And that's most people what they're saying. Find someone you're attracted to. And then they said, this is what you do to deal with it right here. Same way you go to a boring job. You just go get your check and have fun after work. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, Lord. That's the reason why I can't even. This is the reason why Kevin Samuels was calling a lot of these women out because they only want the men for the bag. But you're not bringing nothing to the table. If y'all did research on how to get your own bag instead of trying to get somebody else's bag, then y'all will be successful. Don't depend on this man. This ain't the 1900s. Don't depend on a man to fulfill your needs financially. He should be financially stable and be able to take care of his own and not have any debt. That's another thing that tells me if you're financially stable or not. Do you have any debt? Or are you just trying to use me? But nevertheless, a lot of women are trying to use these men. They're part of, they're going to Sugar Daddy University. They rather ro enroll into Sugar Daddy University than enrolling in Syracuse University, somewhere they can actually get a degree that's worth something in life, for example, or Stanford or anywhere or San Francisco Community College. I'm making stuff up right now, but wherever you can go somewhere, you can go to a trade school. You can go anywhere you need to go to find. You're trying to Google about where people are who are rich. How about Googling how you can get started with your degree today? Use your talent. Use what you got to get what you want. I'm saying use your brains, whatever you got, to get that degree that you deserve so you can get the job that you want. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. Let me show y'all one more thing about these women real quick. I know, I know. It's a lot to process. This one here is talking about things to get your sugar daddy or your sponsor to pay for. They're calling these men sponsors, y'all. 
I'm baffled, but they're calling these men sponsors. And let me get into this last screen that I'm about to share with y'all today before I hop on out of here. But I just had to expose a lot of these women who are not about that life that y'all think y'all are, think they are about. That's why you got to stop leading with your finances. Dre from Harrison Family Values told y'all that. All right, things to get your sugar daddy or sponsor to pay for. Number one, private club memberships for the Rotary Club, Social Club, Museum Membership, Country Club, Polo Club art gallery memberships also for charity use his money to donate enough to become a member of the committee get him to pay for your ticket to the the galas and dinners have him pay your board member fees once you become a part of a committee also have him pay for your education get him to pay for your education so you can get a better job and possibly meet your husband yeah wow see that that's something they call they telling these sugar daddies they want these sugar daddies to pay for their education so they, they can find a husband. Why not pay for your own education or get you a scholarship? Let me just tell you, I went to school. This is the, this is the fact right here. I didn't need a sugar daddy to get me to school. Thank God that I was able to get to school for free, to college. I didn't have to pay not a dime for college. And college was expensive. For y'all who don't know, I'm a software engineer. And college is expensive. I paid, why well, I not have to pay anything, thank God. But the tuition would have been $250,000 over the course of the four and a half years for that particular program. I didn't have to pay a dollar. And most people just think that they know me, you know, y'all know me from Chelsea's Live line as far as me speaking. I wanted to go into journalism at one point in time, but I ended up going into engineering. So that's one of my fun facts that y'all probably didn't know. But I'm a software engineer. And I'm saying that you got to work for what you want. You got to work for what you want in life. I'm going to tell you all that. So that's my daytime. And I'm over here on Chelsea Live Line for the evening time or the nighttime. Nevertheless, I never expected a handout from anybody. I didn't have to ask a sugar daddy to buy me anything to help fund my education whatsoever. That's what I'm trying to let y'all know at the end of the day. So stop looking for handouts, ladies, and go get your own bag. Get up, Take them student loans. I'll call Sally Mae. Call Sally Mae or maybe whoever else you got to call to get that money funded up for your education. That's what I'm saying. No excuses. I had to apply for the scholarships. I had to do the dirty work so I could be able to go to school for free. So you have to do the same thing as well. In addition, hobbies, horseback riding lessons, painting classes. You should, they should, um, the sponsor should pay for that. Foreign language classes, golf lessons. So they are really trying to level these, they trying to level themselves up by having these men pay for their whole lives and their whole lifestyles that they want. Lastly, this level up part, plastic surgery. They want their high value man, their sugar daddy to pay for their plastic surgery, skin treatments, better makeup and skincare, perfumes, new wardrobes, finishing school, hair appointments, nail appointments. What are y'all doing? That's what I want to know. Just sitting back looking pretty, sipping on tea. And let me tell you, Sugar Daddy University is literally a real thing. You may not believe me, but Sugar Daddy University is a real thing. And some women are actually enrolling into that before they enroll in something that can give them a better benefit in life. All right. <laughs> let me share this real quick. This is the last thing I'm going to share about Sugar Daddy University. Just to inform y'all more about what that's all about. It's a mess out here, y'all. But I hope y'all been enjoying this video so far. Make sure you like it. I appreciate that. Make sure you put that bell notification on if you want to be reminded when I come on live every single Wednesday at 6 p.m. EST. And let's get into Sugar Daddy University. Are y'all enrolling? Y'all women on this chat, but not be enrolling. I'm just saying. Where is my sugar daddy? <laughs> Ooh, ooh cha. Where is my sugar daddy? Sugar Daddy University. Is located in New York, and it's the brainchild of well-known sugar daddy, Alan Schneider. The school teaches women how to become professional sugar babies and men how to keep their dignity while basically paying for 24-7 high-class hookers. Schneider also owns the dating site SugarDaddyForMe.com and even hired his own sugar babies to act as professors. And this is what they're talking about here. All right, so apparently, let me let me zoom in some real quick. Apparently, the key, the five key elements to a good transactional relationship are sexuality, understanding, generosity, attraction, and reciprocity. Snyder says that most of his students end up getting married as a result of their relationships, and that there is nothing wrong with a sugar daddy relationship because he believes the real problem lies with the social stigma. Mm mm mm. Yep. So this is just an example of Alan. I think this is Alan Snyder, the actual owner here of Sugar Daddy University. Isn't that a mess? I know it is a mess, but that's that's it. That's Sugar Daddy University, to say the least. I'm going to stop sharing that. 
Yes, I hope y'all learned a lot. It is insane. It is insane. I hope y'all learned a lot about the age gap of dating. Just to recap a little bit, to tell y'all about some stats I was reading earlier. I fall into this stat where 4 in 10 American adults have previously dated someone with an age difference of 10 plus years. I fall into that stat. And I do like to date older for certain reasons, but I have to be discerning because age is not a barometer for maturity. We've realized it. I'm 25, but I'm more mature than a lot of the other women who are around my age. This is why I actually have older friends for a reason because I realized that most of the younger girls are just trying to go out here and go to the club all the time. Let me tell you, in my high school years, I actually was a club promoter for a teen club. So I've had my fun. I've made my money. I've always been on the entrepreneurial mindset. Therefore, I don't feel the need to have to go to the club every weekend. My type of fun is actually going to a nice lounge that's more mature audience that I can do some hustles too. I love to stay on the dance floor. So that's what I like to do. Most women are out here twerking, but I actually like to do the hustles. The cha-cha slide the uh, freak bee hustle, you know, all these different hustles that you can do. That's what I like to do. I don't like to be out here just twerking and doing all that. There's a time and a place for that. And it's with your husband and not with these men out here that's just wanting you for sex to keep it real. Maybe I did quote your book. Yeah, because I was thinking about you when I said that about age is not a barometer for maturity. And if you know, if you don't know, I'm going to let you know. But Dre from Harrison Family Values has his book, which is called From a Fatherless Father to His Sons. It's available on Amazon. I'm going to drop that link in the chat because y'all need to purchase that, like without a doubt. So let me just post that link in the chat right now because it's definitely not a barometer for maturity. I've realized that. It's only available for $9.99, y'all. So y'all might as well get that. I'm sending Latanya from Cure for the Soul Ministries. I can't even talk today. I'm sending Latanya from Cure from the Cure for the Soul. Cure for the Soul Ministries, Lord help me. I'm sending her a book because she actually won a book from Dre from Harrison Family Values for his um for the contest that I gave on my previous episode of Chelsea Live Line. So yes, definitely check out his book from a fatherless father to his sons. Shout out to Chavis. I appreciate you. And I'm definitely trying to go back to school because you gotta keep learning. Shout out to Amy and Bible Truth for being tuned in. And yes, yes, I'm glad to hear that big smooth that you've been reading Dre's book. That's great. Awesome. I love to hear it. Yes, we got to spread the knowledge, spread the knowledge. That's the only way we can learn. Crack open a book. I'd rather have my face in a book than always be on Facebook. And I'm just keeping it real because you don't really gain too much from scrolling, trying to compare yourself to people all day. It doesn't help your mental stability. Nevertheless. So for those who are single, would y'all date somebody who's much older than you, much younger than you? What are your thoughts on that? I'd love to see in the chat. And maybe you want to come up here for a second. I don't know, but I'll just put it in the chat anyway, the StreamYard link for a sec. And let's see what Amy has to say. You can always join me, y'all, if you're interested in joining on StreamYard for a second. Maybe you just want to say a quick hey before I get off of here. But Amy says, well, I date younger guys from mature who are mature in the mind, I guess, in Christ matters. Yeah, older guys are usually more mature. They are. Some. I haven't had that experience yet, but I'm looking forward to that experience. Yes. I am looking forward to it. I'm claiming it. I see some more comments coming in the chat, which is good. Chavis is like, folks want to be sugar babies until daddy wants sugar. Oh, yeah, right. Then they're like, oh, no, I don't want you to touch me because I don't like the way you touch. I don't like the way you hug. I don't like the way you kiss. I don't like the way you smell. You look too old, but you want me for my money, though. So you got to pay attention to that. And Amy's like, I'm only 38. I'm only 38 in 20s. It's cool, 30s. Okay, okay. Jesus loves you. He's like 40 to 45. Okay, that's good. So y'all got those ranges. Y'all got those ranges, which is good to hear. I see y'all in the chat. Make sure y'all like this video. I really enjoyed today's episode. Let me just play that clip of that older woman and what she had to say about the older men liking the younger women for one more time for those who are just catching the replay. Older woman explains why older men love younger women. A lot of grown men date young girls to avoid that grown woman pressure. See, every man want to believe that he's an alpha man until it's time to do what alpha men do, like provide, protect, produce. So when that grown woman put pressure on that wannabe alpha man, who's this. usually a weak man, he runs to a weaker woman. The woman that he can control her mind. The woman that self-esteem is low. The woman he can manipulate, use, and abuse. Yes, that woman. See, ladies, you could be too much for a man. You could be too independent. You could be too accomplished. You could be too established. You could be too confident that you have to send that man back to the basic women that they're comfortable with. And when you finally let that man go, you will realize that he had absolutely nothing to offer from day one, only lies and disappointments, which means that you had everything he wanted. He had nothing. Mm. Yeah. Samson said, younger women can work out okay. 
Chavis says, it's not all good. Carisha from City Girls claims to be depressed since messing with Diddy. Yeah, he's not even claiming her. At the BET Awards, he was giving a shout out to his ex, Boo Dang, who is married now with a child, Cassie. All right. But he wasn't claiming her while she had a sign talking about go daddy and all that stuff. And he wasn't even recognizing her. Look at that. Samson says, no, like maybe if she would tighten that tummy up. Oh, Lord. But like that video, y'all, that's why we got to stay healthy because men want healthier women. So as long as they want healthier women, you got to stay healthy because if they provide and if they're the financial provider, we can stay healthy for ourselves. We got to love ourselves anyway. That's why I stay in that gym three times a week trying to stay consistent, build that habit up early. All it takes is one day. We always say we're going to get to something one day, but it's all about just getting out there and getting started now. Chavis is like, date someone who loves Jesus. Age is one thing. Who are they spiritually? Oh, yeah, I know, because it's not about what they used to do. It's about what they're doing right now. Are they growing spiritually? Do they have a relationship with God, or do they have a situationship with God? I'm so tired of people saying they used to be a part of this ministry. They used to do that. They used to be in prayer all the time, and then they fell off. Why did you fall off? Diagnose that and understand why you fell off. Was it because of friends who weren't even like-minded as you? right? What was the reason for that? And shout out to Jesus loves you. Thank you so much for being tuned in. Oh yeah. Like this video. I'm about to wrap it up. I didn't think I'd be on this long, but I enjoy y'all feedback. I've been enjoying it and I'll be back on next week for another episode. But I, in the future, you know, I'll definitely post a link earlier for StreamYard if anybody wants to come on and enjoy this dialogue and give me a perspective. I have the woman perspective. I love to hear more about the man perspective as well. So thank you so, so much for tuning in. I'm reading some of these chat messages before I get off. Jermaine's like, I see what she's trying to say, but I don't agree with her. I'm always leery when women call other women basic. Yes. And you just have to think about a perspective. Maybe she's been hurt before. I'm not saying that all older guys, like I said, I've been hurt before by an older guy thinking that he would be mature, thinking he would be this, thinking he would be, he would be that. But I'm not going to be bitter from it. I've learned from it and I'm still open to dating older guys because of that. I have healed. I have therapy for a reason. That's what I'm saying. Like, just to be like, you think older men are like this. There's some older men who do want women their age you just have to be discerning you have to understand what their motive is and shout out to your wife as well Chavis for being tuned in I pray she's doing well yes shout out to you last stat I'm gonna read for y'all before I get off is the following reported satisfaction in a relationship may start to see diminishing returns if the age gap between the partners is larger than 10 years this is from a paper in 2016 satisfaction decreases if the age gap is bigger than 10 years, that's just something to be noted for those, but that doesn't mean anything. Shout out to Ron Isley and his wife. They celebrated 17 years on August. I want to say it was the 14th. Yeah. Same day as Jermaine and his wife, Nikki celebrated 18 years, but let me just give you the reason I'm like, let's give a shout out everybody in the chat real quick to Jermaine and his wife from that Christian fam for celebrating 18 years together. Y'all like that's a celebration of love that we got to, we got to celebrate. So let me give y'all the air horn for that real quick before I get off. Yes. We got to give a shout out. I'm waiting for it to come back up because it doesn't do a loop. This is why. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to that Christian fan for celebrating 18 years of marriage, biblical marriage that we can actually look up to. I look up to them for sure. And that's the goals for me. All right. That's goals. So shout out to them. Yes, yes. In addition, Ron Isley and his wife, the reason I brought them up where their anniversary is also August 14th and they celebrated 17 years is because Ron Isley is 80 years old. His wife Candy is like 40 something, but it worked for them. And it can work for others as well. It's not impossible. There will be some differences depending on how you were raised. Nevertheless, it's not impossible. Maybe you want your sugar daddy. Good luck. But if you end up dead on CNBC, NBC, MSN, BET, or wherever you, you know, we hear about your story on, that's going to be the problem on you. We, you have to be careful of that because if you're using men for your money, you do reap what you sow. You do reap what you sow. Just letting you know. But big up successful marriages. Yeah, we're going to definitely celebrate it over here. That's goals all day. So thank you so, so much, y'all, for being on this episode, being patient with me, showing me love on this Wednesday. I'm so thankful to have y'all here. I will be back next week for another episode of Chelsea's Live Live. So stay tuned. Until then, stay blessed. And God willing, I'll be back next week on Chelsea's Live Live.